Yo, what is going on, everybody? Hope you're well and hope you had a good Christmas or whatever you celebrate, you know. And if you don't, hope you had a good day. Uh, well, right now, we have a replay analysis because <laughs> we did the giveaway and I actually picked three people. A little bit of a surprise there as well. So this is the third person to get their replay in. It is SP. And thank you very much. This is actually a champ one. Obviously, freeze replay analysis. SP. It's going to be interesting to see what SP does because SP was at the defensive seminar. So although the defensive seminar was actually primarily for twos and ones, you can use some of the skills, techniques, and methods in freeze as well. And one of them could have been there. Obviously, we'll go over the replay after. Where SP's rotating, there was no one on the backboard. That's a sign in freeze that you should go onto the backboard because really you need someone on the backboard. So easy, wouldn't you know how, to defend on the backboard that you'll see a lot of high-level players are primarily on the backboard. And actually, you see two players on the backboard here, so this is really well played, and they're going to defend that quite successfully. And now you can see the pressure. This is actually really good team pressure from, I think it's Flexi there, Flexi, putting it on. And also to note, guys, this is solo queue. So we'll see how this goes. Unfortunately, on the miss there. So we're going to rotate back if we're SP here. SP, hope you are well, man. And hope everyone, uh, you know, has a good New Year's. Going to move back here. This is good. This is very non-committal, though it's quite nice to see this. But there's a few things I'm seeing as we're going. Oh, nice shot. That could make life a little bit easier. So this is what I call a 90 percenter. We're doing 90 percent right. But the things we aren't doing right, well, the little things where we're a little bit out of position, only by a car's length, is actually what makes up the last... Or 10 to 5% of the game. Good control here. Nice job taking it slow. What could we have done there, guys? Could anyone see a difficulty? Maybe we could have got some vision. Good boost grabs. You know, one of the old sayings in freeze is control the mid boost, control the game. And this looks like a double attempt. Again, there in freeze, especially, you really want to split. I, I don't, you know, it's difficult there because there was a rotation going on, but. I used to play with two players years ago. I mean years ago, back before it was free to play. You know, we're talking five years ago, four years ago. And they were actually both in the top ten in twos at the time. I can't even remember the name. Oh, God. It's Risk, Risco or something. And uh, his teammate. And basically what they would do is they'd mastered taking the ball down the outside wall and just smashing it across from the corner. And instead of the other one following up behind or following up in the middle, they'd actually be across the complete opposite side. So that when that ball went across, they would just tap it in. And they were so good at that. Uh, yeah, two Dominus players back in the day. You can tell because, you know, you don't really see many Dominus players now. You're seeing more of them, yeah. But in the old days, everyone was in the Dominus. You know, the Dominus was the big car. But I'm actually really enjoying watching this SP. This is good control all round. You know, as in you're not diving into anything. So clearly, I mean, look at that. That is clearly from the defensive stuff. So well played. Really nice to see that. And I'm curious to see if you lose this. I mean, I haven't seen this replay. So I don't know if you lose this or not. Good. Great defending. Again, nice bit of inline shadow in there. Obviously, again, there was a little bit of a, a tweak we can make there that would make it a lot easier. That stuff's a bit unnecessary. And uh, let me know below if you got anything nice over the holidays, if you did anything nice. I got a Lego DeLorean, which was so cool. I literally, I, I've never had this since being an adult. You know, when you're a kid, you get a present you really like. You know, I remember it was Tekken 3 for me. I was up at like 6 a.m. You know, every day playing Tekken 3, just grinding Tekken 3. Oh, nicely done. Um, and I haven't felt that in years, you know, not since I was about 8. And then I got this Lego and I was just addicted. I was getting up at like, you know, 10 in the morning. <laughs> getting up at 7 in the morning, which is early for me. And going in there and making the Lego. Ah, fantastic. So this is an actual dominating win right now. Is this a loss? You know, I'm starting to question <laughs> if this is even a loss. <laughs> it's always easier to review a loss than it is to review a win. In certain ways, yes, there's still things we can do, but sometimes the proof, ah, here we go. You don't get the proof of it. I could say there was an overcommit there. They go, but it doesn't matter. It's something I've been doing recently, especially at the beginning of the season. I was taking a few people onto my account, which was GC2 last season, just in GC2. GC, GC, uh, GC1 Div 4, GC2 Div 1, right about there. And obviously after the reset, you're going to go against a lot of good players. 
And I said, you know, diving in, it really doesn't work well. You don't see many people at, at the top level do it. Oh, I don't know. It's all right. We go in there and you just, you can see as soon as you dive in, bang, 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 it's a goal. The speed that these players can generate on the ball, and I'm not talking speed of movement, and I'm not going to, you know, again, say that speed is the key and all this nonsense. Oh, wow, this is a quick comeback. But speed as far as the ability to get opportunities on the net. What the lower ranks will do is they'll try and move faster and not actually get anything on net because they're out of position because they're moving so much. What a high level player does is move less, is more efficient, and then when they finally do create something, it's straight for the jugular because obviously they're in the right position. So one of these tips, pieces of advice that I hate is to play faster because I feel like a lot of people just think it's driving around faster and moving yourself out of position faster. When really, what that means it to me is strike faster on counters. But the rest of the time, you know, take it easy. Just do your flicks and good stuff like that. But Freeze is a different beast altogether. And we've got a free series, Me Raid and Precepts, coming soon. And we're actually going to start at the bottom, work our way up. And then we're going to switch to our main account. And we're going to try and finish off and actually get into SSL. That is, if uh, <laughs> we get hold of Raid, he is always super busy. So it's difficult to get hold of him. All right, we're going to go into overtime here. Make or break. That's a good little jab off the wall there. Nice shadow. Yeah, well played. Really nice shadow. It works in freeze. You know, a lot of people say, oh, it doesn't work in freeze. You know, you got to keep pressure. It works in freeze because if you imagine in freeze, it's much harder to score if there's three defenders back, which sometimes there is. It's hard to score if there's two defenders back. But if there's no one in defense, it's much easier to score. And that is why counters, and I think really V1 were the best at this strategy. Uh, with Torment, Calm, and, and Beast Mode, which then of course became Daniel as well, instead of Torment. And they were really good at that counter style, and uh, it was great to watch that. And again, you know, this is what you're talking about, strategies in the game. There's going to be more strategies coming up in the next year and two years, like I keep saying. And from what I've... Well, I don't want to say too much, but it's going to be good times. You know, I don't want to act like I'm a time traveler. We actually get the win here. Okay. <laughs> let's go through this replay. It was good. It was really good. Uh, let's have a look. So this is, like I say, champ one. So hopefully we're going to find some things here that, you know, champ ones are doing in general. Now, I'm not going to do the full replay because obviously with the overtime as well. But we are going to look at the moments around the goals. All right, so we're going to start from here. This is good positioning. This is all really nice positioning. Good defending from them. Again, good little hit. I like how you're staying central. Really nice. And the great thing with being central, as you can see, is it allows you to get the board if it goes wide. It allows you to get the board if it goes central. And this was great. Proactive offense. You know, you're not messing around here. Little touch. And I don't know what they're doing defensively. They're split for you. Little flick. Nice bump. I mean, it really is an opening there. Teammate just misses. I mean, the play was fine. Nothing wrong with this play. Whoa, I'm not surprised they missed with these camera settings. Jeez. A nice rotation for freeze as well. I mean, this is all really... To be honest, this is very, very good. Chain back the teammate hitting it off. I mean, this is solo queue. It's going to happen. There's no danger, though, that they've hit it off. It doesn't really make a difference. What I would suggest here, though, is starting to hover already. So, um, in this situation, you're the second man, all right? There's probably a... Well, there should be a player behind you, theoretically. Yep. Oh, okay. I didn't mean there. Uh, ideally, you'd want, you know, your third man to be... Oh, have I just skipped backwards? Oh, that was the, oh, that's their team. Oh, it's because it's blue. There we go. Oh, this is perfect. Then. This is actually perfect. So what I would suggest here is you know this is about to get jabbed most likely. So you want to already be flying. Like as soon as you can tell this is a jab, you want to turn this way and just start hovering. And what you can do is turn this way. And the reason we do that is to get a little bit of momentum towards our net. We want momentum towards our net. Then you can jump up. Then you can actually spin a Rooney and actually face the play like this and then hover here. So you're hovering like this. And you've got a little bit of momentum back to net. And you can basically block this ball from the center. Because you need to put this in the corner. Because this is dangerous, believe it or not. It's just the finish rate at champ one isn't too great. But this could have been dangerous. It's actually a real good play from Fexy. But the issue with this is that this got hit again. And the way they hit it is what helps. So if they didn't hit it like this. And what I mean is, if they left this ball now... 
and he, he didn't waste so much boost earlier and actually got above the ball and not hit it again it would be much harder to defend because with the hit here it actually puts it so it goes down but just be aware of that you know try and get up a little bit earlier this was good i mean this is great one thing I would say is if you are returning to the net, don't cut yourself short. Never cut yourself short by turning. So right here, you've turned. Boom. This isn't going to be enough because if this is a double touch, you cannot save this. So let's just say this doesn't bounce on the corner. And you probably couldn't tell this in real time. Let's be honest. You know, it was probably going to hit there. If it hits this plate, it's going in and you cannot defend it because you're outside your net. So you have to, when you're returning to net like this in these situations, you have to get deep in there because if it is a double, you can at least get the save on it. It's going to be hard, don't get me wrong, because it is the backboard man's responsibility. But if you, you know, if they miss, at least give yourself a chance. You may miss it, you may not save it, but you've given yourself more of a chance than this where you'd actually end up hitting it towards your own net if you had anything. And the thing with this as well is you can still go for your aerial play and you can still push out like this and you can still go straight up and you'd still get your goal. But you'd also have that contingency, you know, what if it goes wrong? So great stuff there. We're going to skip ahead here. Okay, so with this, right, you've circled around here and then you've based the play on this side when you don't need to because it's clear your teammate is winning this ball. Like, there, no one's contesting this. So instead, what you needed to do is as you see this here and you've moved across, as soon as you see this teammate come in, just power slide straight away to here and just move across here like that because what you want to do now is you want to remember these players if they don't have boost they're bronze so come straight away supersonic and grab this grab this as you like bump them it'll be a demo if you get it right bang like that and also it's going to cause disruption off the bump, bump there you're gonna have disruption and you won't have to take this challenge you'll actually and this is why this stuff's good you'll be behind the play and you'll be able to dish it back, which is a really important skill. Obviously, you guys know, uh, people who've done the pacifist system, this is what we call the pacifist pivot, where you actually come behind the play sneakily by demos or by faking more plays to slice down into this to play the ball back. Because this is what actually happens a lot in twos and threes. And this is why it's so important to do this. Like what you can see here is everyone's in defense. And because everyone's in defense, because everyone's waiting for this 50, there is uh, so much open space all here. So if you can get, get the demo slash bump, grab the boost, and now play into this area, Johnny Boy here is going to push forward and it'll be too late. And all they've got to do is jab that ball up. So on the blue team, if they jab that ball high, this player is going to be forced to come out. Now, I guarantee they will come out early and you can shoot behind them because I, just, I can just guarantee that. I've seen so much of this game. That you can actually see they're already sneaking. There's, there you go, look. They're already sneaking forward and nothing's happened. So like, you just know what people are going to do because they do the same stuff over and over. So that's why you do that. And again, look, it causes an unnecessary double commit and a waste of boost because they're not looking what's right in front of them. Freddy right here should see that... He's so confused with the blue car. He can see that his teammate's right in front of him. But he'll still go. Now, I don't disagree with him going there. But obviously, in solo queue, it's a bit more difficult because he really had the best opportunity to get an attack. Anyway, back to yourself. When when you're moving back here, it's, it's, this sounds petty, but like make sure we're getting things done here. So come across to this boost pad here. Get this boost pad. Now we can get this boost pad if we need to. Now if we want to like go for a shadow, we can come in close. Now if they hit that and I'm on this pad, now I can actually get the finish. You want to be not backing off so much. You know, something people do in threes and twos is they'll back off all the way. You know, rotation. You know how much I hate rotation. When you look at the best teams, and let's just talk about the best team in recent times. You've got Vitality and BDS. One of the things that made them so strong, and which has become the meta really in, in threes at the high level now, apart, aside from infield passing, has been turning into balls, turning into the play. So a lot of players now in freeze if they were you wouldn't back off here flexi would actually probably stay in the middle and you'd be the guy to hit this you turn and hit this up and then you'd hit it across and you'd have two players sort of one here and one sort of here and this is how people are playing the game now because it's more beneficial to keep the quality pressure 
for you to get into this play off the backboard and i do apologize for using the wrong color but you can come into this play off the backboard without having like flexi doesn't need to come in which means you can hold you can basically move over a whole path so now flexi flexi sorry becomes where marvel is and marvel becomes into this open space and now you're actually on the ball and now you got a lot more coverage because you haven't rotated and the often the problem with rotation is you will rotate you will actually go out of the play this can be good in solo queue for forcing third man but just be aware especially if you've got a team you really want to just cut into the play in this situation yourself and stay on the ball so you know you can calm this by saying you know turn in staying on this i'll turn into it whatever but you want to be looking at the ball here you don't really want to be thinking about rotation and then you can literally what you'll do is you'll just jump single jump lean back and tap this and if you do it right it'll ping up with you and then you can just come and smack it edge or whatever and then you can come off and then you can rotate if you grab this boost and it comes back over you can absolutely turn back onto it again and you can keep this pressure over and over until one of your teammates can pick up uh, pick up a loose ball so just something to consider here and then because you've rotated back you know always look at what you can see what can you see well they're not really doing anything they look a bit clapped i'd stick around here right now stick around here and then you can sort of like move into this because they've the problem with this rotation is if you've looked nothing has happened on this ball nor is there a threat of anything happening okay there's no threat here johnny boy's clearly twisted but look what fexy does just drives off so why have we just given up all that map space because we've been told to rotate and people still think it's the right thing to do despite despite if you watch any pro play any pro play in twos and threes they do not do this rotation stuff i don't know where this has come from i i just it's just from 2015 that's what the pros were doing back then because that's how it was now we have much more micro rotations we have much more offensive rotations and cutting plays yet no one seems to have clicked with this and everyone instead is just spouting the same old nonsense from coaches of the past and people stuck in the past saying you got to rotate you got to keep rotating you got to keep you haven't got to keep rotating and rotation means different things what rotation doesn't mean is just leaving the play and driving all the way back to defense even though they're screwed in offense that doesn't make any sense so i mean like i say this game is way behind where it should be right now um in everything but the pro level because obviously they've had good coaching and they've from experience realized that we can't just keep rotating but for some reason despite people watching all of these pro games all the fans of rlcs all of this stuff they still cannot see what's right in front of them and continue to rotate and tell people to rotate so yeah i just this little rant on rotation again <laughs> from me nothing to do with yourself there but what i'm saying is there's no reason to give up space if they're here like th there's no way we should be giving up space you'd be right here and then you'd get an open net for it that's that's one of the things we, we talked earlier about speed and this is again comes down to it what a lot of people think speed is speed of game and playing fast is i go supersonic i go supersonic i go supersonic i go supersonic uh, what was the fastest team in recent history what people said they're just so fast we can't deal with them bds Look at the speed of the average speed. Monkey Moon was the slowest in the game, yet he had the highest level of efficiency. Why? And that team in general. Because they never really rotated. They just cut into the ball and continue. So they felt so difficult to play because they were constantly peppering the net because they weren't giving up any space. And Just something food for thought there, guys. You're missing out, like I say, with people in twos. And that's why I love the pacifist system is because people are missing out on so many easy goals when you start pairing things up like a boost grab into a triangle defense in a, in a 2v2 for, for twos, you, you're scoring goals. And guys, these are techniques I've used, and you've seen it on my videos. I've used this in, in GC2 and made plays in GC2. Uh, there was a short, I uploaded a short the other day. It was a top 0.3% of the player base at the time. I think it was um, GC2 Div 3. And both players are wide on the wing. And I do the triangle defense and score an open net. And yet it still happens. And this is good. That's what I'm talking about. So we don't rotate and we can keep the pressure. Could we have done something more here? Absolutely. But you'll notice your teammate is probably right behind you. Look, because they've been told to come into this. But it, it this is exactly the point. It doesn't make a difference. It does not make a difference. Well, people say, yeah, but they'll be able to jab it and they'll be able to. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because who are they going to jab it to? Right? One player. This is the point. So 
think about it like this, guys. You know, I know I know the last replay analysis, I, I did do a lot of passing plays. And, and someone said, hold on, you know, these passing plays are a bit advanced for Champ 2. One of my comments, um, and I really believe this, and I do agree, I can understand where you're coming from, but hear, hear me out here. If you look at one of the original passing teams, a team that was brilliant at passing, Flipside Tactics, if you went and watched Flipside Tactics now, people, and this is why I say old, old Breeze teams are like, uh, you know, Grand Champ. But people don't necessarily agree. I know players that do agree with me, usually the, the good players. But a lot of people say, oh, they're like Diamond or Platinum today. So think about it like this. If they are Diamond or Platinum and they were using infield passes and multiple passing plays, there's no excuse for you at Champ 2 if you're supposedly better than Cooks the 97 back in the day. And I got some news, you're not. So just keep that in mind. So here again, we're talking about it. So Fexy's being told to come in. And the idea is that they're going to hit this ball, right? But then SP is going to have to come all the way back and come here. And this is just, now it just we just get into a mess. Well, what would be better? Well, Fexy stays here. Marvel can just turn here, waiting like there. So you've got, you got this sort of attack. You can turn as you have done. Now, you can do whatever you want. Low 50. You could even do a drag back again. Look at the situation. You'll see this in twos. There's so many times you can drag this ball back. You could drag the ball back, hand it off. As you get it rolling, you move here and around here as they jab it. And, you, you know, depending on how they jab it, if they get a good jab, let them go for the double touch. If they fluff it and it comes across here and they're like, oh, no, I can't reach that, then this guy can finish it. And then you can pick it up. If it goes wrong, you can pick it up or you can fake into your stuff. So there's just a lot you can do by keeping more of a positional-based thing than this rotation, sort of forced rotation. Are there times to rotate? Yes. Was this one of them? In my opinion, no. Because you've got boost. You've got 39 boost. One thing I would say is don't instantly push this ball. Similar, I mean, we haven't covered, the, we haven't done the offensive seminar yet, but one of the biggest pieces of advice is to let that ball mature. Because if you're here and you leave this ball and you're here, but you're here, right? So look at the respect. He's giving you respect because he expects you to hit it. It's what I always say to people. You know what people are expecting. Because you're all programmed. Everyone's programmed to do the same thing over and over. Just break the mold. So he's expecting you to hit it. So I'm going to wait. Let it roll past me. And then I'm going to take this ball. And I'm going to play this ball to my teammate. If they weren't obsessed with this rotation stuff. Here. Now look at this. We've collapsed them over. All of their players are facing in this direction. You can see they're all facing this direction. Boom. No one's on the backboard. It's completely uncontested. That's how you play freeze. And that's what everyone's doing. At, you know, at the higher levels, but I don't know. It just doesn't seem to come across to any other rank, and it's just a shame that that gets... All right, never do this because you're all on the same side here, okay? So you need to be more central. See, look at that. So always, what do you see? I see two players on the same side. There's no reason we should be going over there. Let's come over here. We wait, and then boom, we jab this ball. Look, why do we jab it? There's no one on the backboard. This works for twos. And again, what do I always say about people's position? You could jab that, that's a goal, because look how far they're pushing out as last man. Because they don't see anything. People aren't looking. They're not looking. They are just moving. They are just in a daydream. And so you can be better than that by finding where the... In freeze, you want to find the gaps in every game mode you do, especially in freeze. And there's loads of gaps. So you see two players there, get into the space. And they've actually got a decent little, you know, the orange team has done a good job here. They haven't actually overcreated too much. They, they're going to be the first to pick it up because they're in space, you see. Now, I love this. Little tip here. I mean, this is good. This is really good. What I would suggest, if you want to get this perfect, is as they take this shot, finish your power slide off. If you wanted to get this perfect, finish it off. So you're here, facing this way. But we're looking here. So now when you go up with this, right, you can not only do what you did, but you can hit this, come onto the backboard, and then you can even jump off with it. That is the, per you know, that's super advanced, but just letting you know that exists. Doesn't have to be like, oh God, he's, th that's impossible. Just letting you know it exists. Right, if you ever get a missed touch here, well, okay, it's, it's, I don't disagree with this, nice. Just think more about just flying down if you wanted to do anything, as opposed to looking for miracles, all right? Just know your sort of limits there. Even if this was Zen, that's not going to be a goal. He would just, he would just, he wouldn't even bother flying down. He would just land and grab that. Good boost grab there. Nice. Potentially, you could turn back in there and take that, but it's not worth the risk. I agree. You know, you've got a two goal lead here. 
Good little touch to the side. Okay, so again, what's the question here? I, I, there was a clip I meant to do, but it's at the beginning now. We'll do it here. So when you're rotating like this, what do you see? What do you see? That's the most imperative thing about this game. What I see is my teammates on the ground. Right, I'm going to creep up to here because we need a backboard presence. We do. We need a backboard presence. So if this, for example, if he hits that and Johnny was to 50 and he went high, you'd be straight away getting rid of the danger. If it doesn't, it's fine. But, you know, you just want to wait here. The thing is, like with this, this play is just driving off. So they're expecting a, a really heavy pass. Yeah, nice. Okay. Okay, not bad. Nice, nice bit of aggression. But just be aware of that. It's something to consider. It's, it works because they've just sort of left the play again. They, they didn't need to... I don't understand why they just left here. They had pressure. So they just leave straight away. Oh, there's a good bump. Now they've got really nothing on the board. It's actually a decent cut from Johnny Boy. Trying to make something happen. But um, yeah, nice 50. Nice job forcing it through. Good boost grab again. You're getting those level 3s, which is nice to see. You could go and take this straight away. I wouldn't even bother hesitating there. So like right here, that ball's hot. Look, again, what do you see? Okay, Gangster Rap can't hit that ball. Johnny Boy can't hit that ball. They're in front of it. They're out awkward. But Freddy is like looking bad. They're reversing up the backboard straight away. These are the things you want to be looking for. Just turn, jump straight up and just like go for something here. Go for something. Smack it in. It goes in anyway. But just, again, what do you see? It's all about what you see. Here comes the... A little bit of a barrage here. It comes mainly off the kickoff. So don't disagree with that. Would it be nice to have someone follow this? I mean, you should always have someone following in freeze. I don't like the double corner grab on the boost. Can be risky. Can be risky. Nice try. You, you know what you've done there. I think you know what you've done there. You didn't need to hit this ball. You didn't need to hit this ball. Because you want, what you want to do here, I, I like what you're doing. But remember, let that ball mature for you. So if you don't touch this ball, you've got the perfect lateral dribble setup of your life. It's going to roll down here. If you don't touch that, it's going to roll and it's going to roll forward. You can stay behind it. You can take this. Now, what I would do is because this guy's here, you know what I'd do? I'd go here and then I'd instantly cut it here. Because I don't want to go lateral. This guy's going to challenge me. This guy will just be an autopilot coming in from the side. You can cut around him into this space here. Go for a quick flick. That's what I would do. But the main thing the main observation to make here is you're under no threat you're under no danger in your corner personally don't hit this don't even hit this and i would actually come in a little bit further in here just in case they do challenge like this so i'd be here and if they don't which they haven't as it's rolling i can actually come into it straight away that would actually be the best approach um so yeah just keep that in mind Yeah, you've ended up under the ball here. So if this ever does happen, and you've done this hit, which you, you shouldn't have done, you're going to have to double jump here. You're going to have to lean back and double jump and try and create a block. And in this situation here, what I always say to people, you're never in danger in your corner. If you hit it, you are. So with this, this is your opportunity. Did you Again, what do you see? Teammates have double commit straight away. I'm going to go back into net here. Because I can defend that easily. It gives me a chance. People say, I've had people say to me, yeah, but it's going to be hard. Yeah, what? Harder than giving them an open net. And that's what people never seem to think of. They only think of like one move ahead. Make it as easy as possible. All right. But that's not on you. There was a lot of misses there. A lot of, a lot of sort of dives. Here we go. Going for the next kickoff here. Nice mid boost grab. All right. Good patience. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't cheat. I wouldn't even bother cheating here. Okay, let's just see what happens. Okay, not bad. Not bad because they get the demo. I thought Fexy might turn on that, but they didn't. Fair dues. This is good. What I would like to see, though, is this ball goes high. Remember, defensive seminar. Match the height of the ball. Even here. Come up here. Because if I'm here, I can see everything. I can see everything. And if they did go to challenge, I could hit it down. Now, granted, that might be a pass away. If you really wanted to stay grounded and you wanted to think of your next move, come out of ball cam into car cam. This will help us, this little thing on the floor. But I need to see what's going on. I'm more interested in what's going on than anything else. So right here, we get vision after we touch it. And now that ball's gone away from us. I want vision before I touch it because that will help me calculate my next move. So I'm here. I'm in vision right now. I can see everyone. 
and I can see that there's free ball. So I don't even hit this. I let this bounce. I, again, I let this work for me. And I'll probably go for a bounce dribble because it'll be a nice little setup for you. Uh, sorry, uh, an air dribble off the bounce. Nice try on the demo. But you can just see the the danger of not having vision because technically this is like a hit away. Um, let's see what your team does though. Oh, we're just going to come into this camera setting. Okay, hold on. That's a great shot. Yeah, it's a little bit awkward here. No one really goes for that ball. Yeah, that's difficult. That is difficult. Because either of these players should have gone for this ball. Um, in my eyes, what it was is Fexy should not have flipped here. You should never flip on an interaction on the ball, like aka a 50. Because now, they don't know what's going to happen here. And they've gone, like, you're definitely winning that. If they just was more patient, now they can actually just jump up and just tap that down into the corner wall. So it rolls up, and they may even be able to land on the wall. But that's what's happened there. They've just been a bit too aggressive. And then it causes space. It's all about space in this game. If you're too aggressive and you try and push too much and you believe in miracles, then you will end up creating gaps for the opponent to take. Right, this is always tilting when you go for kickoff and it's just a goal because no one seems to do anything. Let's have a look. No one follows this up. All right, so here we go. They should have took that. They had to hit that. You, you guys, you have to know to hit this. Um, you know, obviously, Fexy, this is their replay analysis, but like, you have to, if you can, especially this, this is why I hate this position because you can't see anything. This is why I don't like it. If you are in this position, you absolutely have to hit the ball because you cannot see anything. And by the time it turns, it's too late. It's impossible to react to this. So you've got to see this coming if you're Fexy. And just, just jump and just pinch that ball. Just hit that ball. Because you can't let the ball... Remember the rules of Rocket League? Don't let a backboard touch go uncontested unless you have full vision. So had they have done something a little bit more fundamentally sound here, they could actually move out onto this because they can see... And then all they got to do is just double. This is one of the moves I use all the time. Just double jump there. You've cleared out two of the defenders. The ball's going to be nice. So you might even be able to go for a demo. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at what Marvel did. That's, yeah, that is on Fexy. They've got to hit that ball. I'm going to skip ahead here um, to the ending. Again, just be wary of this turn. Like, just finish it off. Finish this movement off. I personally, we're looking here, might even go a little bit wider, thinking more about the backboard because we don't have any protection there. Or if I am going to do what you did, I would just go here, just in case. Just in case. Just to get your vi like You get more vision doing this, is my point. You're turning. Oh, what if something bad happens here? We don't really have the vision. Be careful of stacking this side. And be careful of these hitaways, you know. This, this ball here, don't dodge into everything. If you single jump into this, and if you do it right, you can follow. When you dodge, you, there's no way you can follow it. Unless you've got the full map to work with, which you haven't here because there's defenders. So instead, if you let this come a little bit further, single jump to lift it up, jump onto the wall with it, you might now be able to do something special. But beware of just dodging mindlessly into the ball kind of thing. Always risky, this is. Always risky in, in solo queue. But I don't blame you for going it. Or it's got 100 boost. If you could have just hit lower on the ball, that would have been great. Teammates shouldn't have gone... F well, it's difficult because you guys aren't in comms, actually. They can't see you here, I don't think. They should have heard you there. You can clearly hear, hear you. And again, they didn't really need to go for this because no one's contesting this ball. No, no one on the orange team is going for this. And what happens if we hit it? We're just going to hit that ball as a pass. So it's just, again, something to consider. You can do it very well in freeze. You can get to Grand Champion freeze without ever needing to aerial. Yes, you heard it here first. You can quote me on that. You can get to Grand Champ in 3v3 without ever needing to aerial as a team. If you understand wall positions. Yeah, good save. Really nice. And again, look at the overcommit and the middle's open. So, I, yeah, main things I would say is what do you see? What do you see? And never have a triple stack. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's nice to have a triple stack burger. I ain't going to disagree with that, you know. But never triple stack the same side. 
because you have a zero ability to pick up the loose ball if it goes anywhere but directly to the side, which is highly unlikely because there's a wall there that's going to make the ball deflect off it. I hope that helps. It's always really difficult to do freeze replay analysis um, because when it's not a team, and especially with that being majority kickoff goals. You guys actually did really well. I like your patience. I think you should match that, the height of the ball a bit more. Let that ball mature a little bit more for you as well in certain situations when you've got space. Let it mature. So it, just as an example, if I'm here, all right, and this ball's looping round. Let me, let me get this ball looping round. Right? And that player hasn't followed. They're waiting for me to hit that ball. I know that. So let it mature. Let it mature. Now look at this. Now there's going to be a second when they're like, uh, what do I do? Bang. Now you've got the ball. Now you can go for your flicks or do whatever you want. Or you could just shoot it or you could pass it. And this is why like just following like the freeze rotation is just a terrible idea at the moment. So I'm here. I faked him. And my teammate decides not to follow me and they go in the middle. And maybe I faked that a few times. And then I literally just come here and I just tap it over to them. Imagine I can't do that fast enough. But he didn't follow up and he's here and he just jabs it like that. Do you know, you see, what it's so easy when people slow it down, think let's play slower, more efficiently, more effectively, and let's actually try and get quality on the opponent's net instead of just trying to force it through because it does not work at the higher ranks. You know, no matter what people tell you, it doesn't work. And I'm talking the really higher ranks, you know, bubble and pro players and not ones that have spent 12 hours a day working on mechanics. Good, solid players. You know, that's what you want to be looking at because that's the most attainable and that's how they do it. So thank you so much for submitting this replay to be uh, to be on the channel. So thank you so much. I do hope that helps. Like I say, it is a difficult one for ease, but if you took anything out of that, I'm really happy to hear that. And uh, yeah, guys, we will be back next year. Uh, thank you for the support this year. It's been incredible. Next year, we have a pretty cool series. I don't want to talk too much about, but it's going to happen also going to be doing a 3v3 road to ssl and we'll, we'll get to grand champ with our aerials just to show you what i mean when i say aerials we're going to be using the walls the walls and the backboard will be our aerials we don't really need to use aerials that's a little challenge we'll do for ourselves and i will be doing a series in ones because i want to get the ones back up you know i'm only sort of around high champ two champ three at the moment i want to get back into gc so i'm going to be doing a series following my own journey with top ones coaches and hopefully you guys can take what we get the knowledge from them and you can also use it to improve as well obviously you might have a different style to me mine's very defensive so i'll be looking to get sessions from the meister general himself raid who's obviously in my opinion one of the greatest 1v1 minds you've seen what he can do he got to ssl with no mechanics and he only lost two people the whole way through i mean that's unheard of it's absolutely mad and obviously precepts so obviously raid was four number four in the world in his prime 12 in the world on 20 fps on a laptop keep that in mind and obviously precepts was also i believe he was also i think he was 14th in the world at one point as well so top top guys to be giving me advice here and they have a very similar style to myself that they're not very they would say themselves they're not super mechanical players um, at least they didn't build their game on mechanics they built it on strategy and fundamentals so i'm looking forward to getting their advice and hopefully we can share that together thank you very much for watching happy new year everybody i hope you have a good one and i'll see you soon peace out peace peace